Hi, I'm David Stein of Money for the Rest of Us, and today we're going to look at retirement spending rates. Is the 4% retirement spending rule broken? Are there other alternatives? The original retirement spending rule was developed by Bill Bengen in 1994. It was based on U.S. stock market data, U.S. bond market data. And what the 4% rule is, and he called it the safe max, it's the highest first-year spending rate as a percent of the retirement nest egg that could be spent, and then that's the first year, some percentage amount spent, and then that dollar amount is adjusted by the rate of inflation in subsequent years. Bengen used 30-year retirement, 50% U.S. stocks, 50% intermediate U.S. government bonds, and the data went from 1926 originally through 1991, and then he did a follow-up taking the data through 2019. He found in the original study that 4%, that if a retiree over a 30-year time horizon in the initial year spent 4% and then increased that amount by the rate of inflation, that they wouldn't run out of money and face retirement ruin. When he did the updated numbers, he found that on average, the first year the retirees could spend 7% in that first year retirement and then adjust it by the rate of inflation, and they didn't run out of money. The best case was 13%, and the worst case, what he calls the safe max, is 4.5%. Here's the thing, though. The 4% spending rule is based on U.S. data only, and some academics, and, and I agree, the U.S. has been very fortuitous. It's just one data set, and the U.S. stock market has done incredibly well since 1926, supporting higher spending rates. That hasn't been the case in other countries. Japan, for example, the, the stock market hasn't done as well since the, the late 1980s, and that means a 4% spending rule wouldn't have worked. Retirees would have run out of money. Or there are places where the stock market basically shut down and discontinued, and that would be retirement ruin also. So here's a, a paper, it came out last year, and it uses a different data set, a broader data set. It's the safe withdrawal rate, and you can see the co-authors, but they did something interesting. They did a bootstrap simulation, and, and they spent a lot of time coming up with a broader data set, 38 developed market countries from 1890 to 2019, and it was domestic stocks, international stocks, bonds, and cash. And they did what's known as a bootstrap simulation. They took 10-year blocks of time, and they were, so they would look at the ten, a specific 10-year block of time and look at how did that country's stock market do domestic, how did the local investors, what would their have experience have been investing outside of that country, what about bonds or what about cash? And they used 10-year blocks of time, 120 months, in order to keep the consistency between the stock returns, the bond returns, and the international stocks. And they did a number of simulations, and they would add countries when they became a developed market. So when their percentage of agriculture got below some level. And, and when it, it clear that the economy was no longer developed due to for whatever reason, it was taken out of the, da the database. Now, every data set, you're making s s choices. In, in their case, they're trying to keep it as broad as possible, have some rules, but then they ran the, these retirement simulations to see, well, is the 4% retirement rule supportable? Let's see what they found out. Let's go over to the... Let's look at this table here. They use different weights between stocks and bonds overall. The original Bengen study used 50% stocks, 50% bonds. And then here's the probability of ruin, 1%, a 5% chance of running out of money, 10%. And, and then down here we have different weights. So let's just focus on 60% stocks, 40% bonds, in a U.S.-only sample, just U.S. markets, that supports the 4% spending rule. 4.2% would, 
with a 5% chance of running out of money over a 30-year retirement. But if we use the broader sample with 38 countries instead of just the U.S., again, that, that bootstrap simulation, that supported only a 2.3% spending rate. And depending on the allocation, it, it's much lower. And it's because other countries' stock markets have done worse than the U.S. And so when you use a broader data set, it, it shows that it can't spend, you can't spend as much. And they, they did sort of target date funds to see what that would be. And it, 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 it's fascinating from that aspect. And, and here's another way to look at it. This is the payout rate. And their returns are all real returns, so net of inflation. So they're not increasing the spending amount by the rate of inflation. They can keep that spending rate the same because they're using real net of inflation returns in their database. But you can see the red line is U.S. sample. The probability of ruin is much lower even as the spending rate increases compared to their data set. What, what do we do with that? What does that mean as a retiree? Should you be spending less than 4%? Are there other things you can do? I personally wouldn't be comfortable starting with a 4% spending rate and adjusted for inflation no matter what the market does. I would want to have more flexibility. And as retirees, we have that flexibility. We can hopefully adjust our spending based on how markets evolve. So maybe, maybe we start with a 4% spending rate and see how it goes. But recognize that it isn't an ironclad law, as Bill Bengen said. It was just his study, his data, supported a higher spending rate. This new study supports a lower spending rate, a broader study. I think it's a better sample of, of data. But we have that flexibility to adjust. The other thing we can do, and we've talked about this a lot on our podcast, Money for the Rest of Us, is an immediate annuity to take a, a single premium immediate annuity, take a portion of our nest egg and convert it to guaranteed income for life. And, and that makes us not have to be so dependent on the returns of the stock market for our retirement. Now, we have a number of, of different shows that, that we have discussed retirement spending. This most recent one, episode 460, is, looks at the same data set where they talk about should your retirement funds both before and during retirement be 100% stocks. That's one way to look at it. You can check that out on our podcast, wherever you get your podcast, Die With Zero. The idea is let's just spend it all. We talk about the pros and cons of that. Here's an interview with Ramit Sethi. Find your retirement investing and living style. And there's all these resources because it's a hard decision to figure out, well, how much should we spend in retirement? But the important thing to know is the 4% rule isn't magic. It's based on U.S. stock market returns. And if things continue like they have, then it's supportable. But if returns are lower and more consistent as it has been outside of the U.S., where more bad things have happened than a, a lower spending rate, but we can adjust it and we can complement it with, with annuities and, and, and work and so we can muddle our way through retirement, which is what we're going to have to do anyway. Hey, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. And you can subscribe to our channel. But more importantly, why don't you subscribe to our weekly Insider's Guide email newsletter. I'll include a link below. Uh, we send out a weekly essay on investing. Let us know what we're doing. Let you know what we're doing with the money for the rest of this community and what's going on. Thanks for listening.